Now I will make a few brief additional comments on the labor factor of production, since it is one of the most important and relevant, and also one of the most associated with conflicts and interpretative errors. Mises writes that there are two types of labor, introversive labor and extroversive labor. Introversive labor is performed for pleasure, for exercise, for amusement, or for some higher goal of a moral or religious nature. Clearly, introversive labor requires effort, or do we not have to make an effort when we play a game of soccer, or do we not sweat when we play a game of tennis? or when, outside of our work hours, we volunteer for an NGO, or when we paint a picture for pleasure. Does my son not spend hours and put in considerable effort when he assembles a Lego structure? Of course he does. It is simply that, on our subjective value scales, the personal satisfaction we derive from physical exercise the triumph of coming in first in the 100-meter flat race, the aesthetic pleasure of completing a work of art, the personal satisfaction Mother Teresa of Calcutta found in having helped those most in need more than make up for the effort and sacrifice required, no matter how great. When this is the case, we do not need to be paid for the work we do. We are paid in satisfaction. This is called introversive labor. In contrast, extroversive labor entails a satisfaction which is not compensated for by inner satisfaction. But by what we obtain in the production process, when we exchange the results of our services for monetary units. We place a higher subjective value on the results of the effort we sell in the production process than on lost leisure. The Bible tells us that work is toil, a kind of curse. We all share the fate of having to earn our bread by the sweat of our brows. Everyone has to make a living. And you will all have to find a way to make a living. From a subjective standpoint, we have an enormous advantage if we are able to earn our living doing something we like. That way, dear students, we are doubly paid. Not only do we receive our wages, but we also gain the inner satisfaction of a job well done, of working at something we like or feel a vocation for. As I have mentioned to you, and to the last group as well, I have a real vocation as a teacher. I love teaching, though it is very hard work. I have to spend long hours studying, writing books, and preparing my lessons beforehand. I make a major effort to transfer my knowledge to you here. I lose a kilo every time I teach a class. But I would be delighted to teach even if no one paid me for it. So, if I would teach you for free, and I might even be willing to pay you for the privilege of teaching you, and it turns out that not only do I not have to pay you, and I am delighted to teach you, but you actually pay me, I am the luckiest man in the world, because ultimately I am being paid twice. Dear students, one of the greatest tragedies of humanity, one of the most devastating effects of misguided, leftist, progressive, anti-capitalist union propaganda, has been the deliberate extinguishing of that joy and pleasure which we find in the introversive part of the work we do. The mental outlook of workers has been scorned, and they have been fed the erroneous idea that they are exploited by a wicked capitalist system, and that it is only thanks to the supposed protection of the state, or unions, or other people, like moral leaders, 
that the poor workers can survive. And people who used to go to work happy start to go to work angry, thinking they are alienated victims of a soulless machine. Not only is this portrayal entirely inaccurate, but it is also wicked and immoral because it poisons many workers who would go to work delighted and would be paid two salaries, as I am. One simply in the satisfaction of a job well done and another in cash. To communicate to workers the idea that they are the victims of exploitation, to replace the joy of work with the aggravation of feeling exploited, is to inflict on workers one of the severest injuries that can be done to a person. Furthermore, a great many personal maladjustments result. So, today's class has been very practical. You have learned how to approach a job interview. You have learned that the more you contribute to the process of production, the more money you will make. In addition, you have learned that it is important to go to work happy, cheerful, with your head held high, because then you will be doubly paid. Your work will come out better. You will contribute more. You will earn more in cash. And you will also be happier. Your entrepreneurial ability will be important as well when it comes to deciding where you want to work. Not all companies are equal. Sometimes we must make entrepreneurial decisions in a context of uncertainty. It may take us two or three attempts, or a change in our circumstances, to find a job that is right for us. And we have to keep looking until we find one. There is no doubt about it. But do try to find happiness in what you do. Because honestly, if you do, your lives will be radically different and much better than they would otherwise have been.